What's up, roadies, and welcome back to The Road Trip. It's me, Tommy Russell Jr., and in this video, we're focusing on the Coachella 2023 Saturday Musties. This video, y'all, was incredibly hard to make. Like, it was really hard to make. I couldn't decide, because if I'm being honest, there's only, like, truthfully, I only really listen to, like, for real, for real, two of these artists. Two of these artists, I've, and I guess one of them is a group. <laughs> so I only listened to three of these artists, like for real, for real. Um, but yeah, I think that's what made it so hard is this, this Saturday lineup, I truly had to like go in and find artists and really listen to everybody's music and really spend some time with them and figure out like, okay, I think I like this. Okay, this is a vibe. Okay, let me dive in deeper. Am I willing to see like a whole set of theirs? Do I have to see them? Like it was tough, y'all. This was, whew. It was so tough that at the end of this video, I'm doing a little honorable mentions, okay? Because these were like, hmm, like that that's literally what I wrote, hmm, because that's how I felt when I was thinking about putting these artists in there, and I'm just like, mm, I, don't, mm, I don't know, you know, but... We made it through, y'all. We made it through. And also, just a heads up, my ticket is on the way. I just got the confirmation email today. Well, yesterday, because it's like 2 o'clock right now, Thursday, March. What is this? Ninth? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I just got the email. My ticket is on the way, so hooray for that. But anyway, we'll get into that later. Let's go ahead and dive into the artist you should know for Coachella 2023 Saturday edition, My Must Sees. So, starting us off with number one, y'all, is none other than Rosalia. I know. I know. I, I, I never listened to the girl like that knew of her knew of her work I knew the girls talked about her and I had heard songs here and there but I don't know it just didn't like stick on me like that so my introduction to her was through my Spanish class actually my Spanish professor talked to us about her and he was specifically showing us her song Malamente and that song it, it focuses on like I can't really give you what the lyrics are because if I'm being honest I don't really know most of what she's talking about but much like bad bunny so it is what it is but i'll do my research you know i'm gonna look up the lyrics and everything but meanwhile the vibe and what i'm listening to up love it but in malamente my professor was showing us about how she like really incorporates her culture really incorporates the tradition is in everything like that and they wear these hoods called capirotes and they much like mimic the kkk cape Thing, hoods you know however obviously they came first no shade to the spanish because that's their thing unless it means something else but i'm, I'm sure from what he taught us <laughs> they wear this during semana santa which is holy week but our teacher was just telling us about the culture and then you know he also was like tying in the fact that like it, it, it does resemble this, but please understand what this really means, you know? So that was my first dose of Rosalie. And I was like, oh, okay, this is cute. Cute girl. I like it. The vibe is cool, like whatever. But I really wasn't, I really wasn't that interested, okay? But then over the years, I kept hearing her name. And then one of my close friends went and saw her in concert in Miami. And she was like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. You have to see her, like if you ever get the chance. So when I saw her name on the lineup, I was like, oh, cool. Here's my chance. And doing the deep dive, y'all, I love the music. I mean, she has a, her first album, Los Angeles. Like, I really like it. Yeah, Rosalia has had me in tears. A vocalist, y'all. A real vocalist. Um, That album, y'all, is incredible. And I'll be honest, her, the sound that she was giving... I thought that that was like a, a, a like a, a Middle Eastern vibe, you know, pardon my ignorance, but it did. It gave like just the way that she like plays with the vibrato, I think. And like, it's just like, oh, kind of thing. <laughs> That's my best impression. But like the way that she gave that, y'all, I was like, I if I didn't know no better, if I didn't know who she was and I just heard it, I would have thought she was like a Middle Eastern artist. Vocals, y'all. She is a vocalist and I can't wait to hear this live. I hope that she can produce the same vocals that she gives on the track live because it would bring me to tears, y'all. It would bring me to tears. La Fama, I love that song. 
like that that's my that's my cut right there okay but Moto, Mo, motomami motomami i believe is the most recent album and motomami <laughs> I love this album, y'all. It's it's really dope. And it's like an amalgamation of all of her past works. So that was the first one I decided to dive into before going into the deep dive because I feel like Motomami is what she's probably going to perform most. Loved it. I mean, yeah, Motomami, Motomami, Motomami. I love that. I, I, I love the album, the whole thing. I run it front to back. I listen to it in the gym. I listen to it at the house. I listen to it all the time. Really a good album, okay? So obviously then I went back to her first album to see what that was like told y'all the vibe loved it and really showed how much of a vocalist she is and then I went to the second album El Mal Querer and I like that album actually a lot I mean I really just like her music and there's a song on that album specifically Pienso in tu mira that song y'all every time it's crazy because it came on youtube and then it played on my on spotify a couple times and it would be just random and i would always hear it and be like oh i like this song and then i look to see which one it was and i'm like oh, okay so i still haven't picked up that this is my song but like i'm starting to learn like i, I love that song yeah rosalia has a bunch of hits y'all and she's only 30 crazy enough she will be 31 this year but young doing her thing like i live for rosalia y'all She's a performer, she's a dancer, she's a vocalist, she's an artist, she's everything, y'all. She's the moment, she's the truth. Rosalie is a girl. I'm telling you, you need to pop in. Like, I'm, can you not tell? I'm telling you, go, 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 see Rosalia, 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 Rosalia. Yeah, go do yourself a favor, go see Rosalia. She's number one on the list, and that's just that. At number two, we have Eric Prides, y'all. Eric Prides, originally, I was only just interested in the visuals, really. Like, I kept seeing in the Reddit feeds, like, Eric Prides, Eric Prides, Eric Prides. Everybody's talking about him. So I said, you know, okay, I gotta go see what it's about. And when I saw it on YouTube, whoa. I can honestly say between Eric Prides and the next artist I'm going to say, it's looking like this year might be some of the best visuals we've ever had at Coachella. Like, hands down. And and I must say, too, it's not just Eric Prides, but it's Eric Prides presents Hollow. And Hollow is exactly what it is. The holograms, y'all. It's like these 3D holograms. And I don't even know how they're going to make this work, right? Because my ignorance, yet again... You need 3D glasses. So <laughs> are they handing out 3D glasses when we get in the, in the Sahara tent? Because that's where I feel like the only place it could be is the Sahara tent. But like, how are we making this work? I just, I got to see it for myself, y'all. I think it's it's incredible. He does like these big images of this eyeball that's like twitching. And I think it like shoots lasers at one point. He has like this huge whale or spaceships or even this cloud that was like shooting out lightning. Like it, it's crazy. I've got to see it, y'all. I have to see it. I'm really excited. I just, I think that if you want to see something spectacular and see Coachella at its fullest potential when it comes to technology I think Eric Prides is going to be the place to see it I think that he is really going to exemplify what Coachella has to offer that no matter the artist if you want to bring it to life the Coachella stage and not because we know the main stage is called the Coachella stage but the Coachella stages are the place to do it like they are going to provide you the space, the opportunity, the resources to make what you want come alive on those stages. And that's why I'm always excited that I get to see my favorite artists at Coachella. I pretty much have seen all of my favorite artists at Coachella. And it's a time. It's a time. And I think Eric Prize is going to show out and he's really going to push the bounds of what Coachella can do. But even more than just that, like when I listen to his music, like alone, separate from his actual visuals, I really like it. He has an album called opus and first i heard just the song title opus and i liked it i was in my room just like i was going it was giving like upbeat energetic dance it was just a vibe and i really felt it and i was just like "Ooh, i like this so then when i went back to look at the visuals it really just 
made me even more excited, y'all. But I truly think that this year is the year of visuals when it comes to Coachella. Don't miss it. I mean, luckily I'm going to weekend two, so it probably won't be as packed, <laughs> which I love about weekend two. So I, I'll have a good spot, but I'm excited to see what Eric Prides is going to do. He's going to bring a show to the desert. And if I'm being honest, I think him and Rosalia are going to compete. I think they're going to clash and I'm going to be so upset because I want to see both of them full out. So the fact that I might have to fight, but I'm hoping maybe Eric Prides is at the same time as the headliner because then, you know, I I'm, I will definitely be at Eric Prides and then I'll shoot over to the headliner, you know, a little later. But Eric Prides, it's looking amazing, y'all. I highly recommend going to go see him just for the visuals alone, like I said, but the music as well. Like, it's going to be an amazing time at the Sahara Tent easily. Do yourself a favor, go see Eric Prides. Which brings me to... Our number three artist, y'all. At number three, we have Tale of Us. Tale of Us, y'all. Again, if I'm being honest, the music, I really like the music, just like I do Eric Prides. I like the music, but I wasn't brought to them by the music. I was brought to them by the visuals, y'all. Now, here's the breakdown of Tell of Us. Tell of Us is comprised of two different artists, okay? Two different people. There's the first one who is Matteo Miller. Maleri, um, it, they're both Italian, so excuse me. Y'all know I'm not good at pronunciation. And then we have Carmen Con Conte. Carmen, okay? So we got Matteo and Carmen, okay? And these two together make Tale of Us. Now, on the side project, we have Anima, okay? Follow me now, follow me. Anima is comprised of Matteo and Alessio, okay? Alessio does the visuals. Matteo handles more of the music side, okay? They do some amazing visuals, y'all. They had a show, Afterlife, in Tulum, y'all. I, I need y'all to go see their performance, Anima's performance in Tulum, okay? And technically, they also have a Tale of Us performance. So we'll just say Tale of Us for now, but Anima... I already know the resources that they are doing with Anima. They're going to bring to Coachella anyway for Tale of Us. So it's pretty much all one. But like, y'all, you have to go check out the Afterlife Tulum. It's it's remarkable, y'all. These visuals, like, and I remember actually, because I had seen it before and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to see this. But it wasn't the Tulum performance. It was actually a performance in London where it's like almost like this corridor. I don't know, but it was a show in this in this very narrow space. And they they know how to fit the the NFT because actually I don't want to break, I don't want to bore you, but like basically what Mateo is doing and Alessio is doing as Anima is like giving artists a, a platform to make these NFTs and these NFTs are what we see during the performances. And there's, the, there's a whole video about it. There's a whole breakdown and I'll put that in a playlist y'all, but like, it's very interesting. I can't say that I necessarily fully understood it, but I think it was trying to give like artists more agency over their work and help them with monetizing their work and things like that. But like, y'all, what they did at Afterlife and past that, what they did in London, which is, uh, I saw a random video on Instagram and I was like, what is this visual? So once I was doing my research and I found out through about Tale of Us and, you know, just the breakdown of all that, I was like, oh my gosh. I got to see this because I've been I've been wondering. It's like they have this robot that is like trying to break through this glass. And it, it, it I can't even do it justice, y'all. I'm telling you, check out the afterlife performance at Tulum, Tale of Us, or it might be under Anima. Check them out, y'all, because the visuals alone are crazy. The music is great. The music is amazing. It gives me a little more like deep house. It's a little darker. It's a little like introspective that's that's what i would say okay 
Tale of Us gives me a little more introspective and then you have these visuals. So you're probably going to look up and be like, oh, this is a lot right now. <laughs> this is a lot. OK, but like Eric Prides gives like very upbeat and you're in it and you're there while still having these visuals kind of thing. That's kind of the difference to me sonically, but both the amazing visuals, but focusing on Tale of Us like y'all, I'm excited to see what they're going to do at Coachella. And again, I think that they're going to be in the Sahara tent. Absolutely. You got to see it. You got to be there, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I feel it in my bone. I feel it in my core, y'all. The visuals, what Coachella is about to allow them to bring and give them the resources for and what we're just about to see between Tale of Us and Eric Prides. Man, I, I, I can't even begin. I can't even begin, but I'm telling y'all right now, be there. Must-sees, absolutely. So out of our electronic bag, y'all, and into our R&B, hip-hop, jazz vibe, we have number four with Dinner Party, y'all. And Dinner Party is comprised of four different artists, which is, I, I, my mind is still blown because I kind of just did the research on Dinner Party when it came to like everything about them but I've already listened to their music all that good stuff but I just didn't do my individual dives okay until now and my mind is a little blown so Robert Glasper okay I didn't know about Robert Glasper until Chris Brown made his comments because he was upset that he didn't win the Grammy and he lost to Robert Glasper and he was like who the is Robert Glasper and I thought the same thing but you know Chris you know you're in the you're in the industry baby you're tapped in so you should have known now that I know who he is I'm like you should have known okay uh, but people were really on him they were on Chris's tail about not knowing who Robert Glasper were and they actually said maybe you would have won a Grammy by now had you known who Robert Glasper was no tea, no shade, but you know, the people would speak it. So I said, who is Robert Glasper? I got to hear him. So I checked this stuff out and I was like, oh my gosh, I like the latest album. I'm actually going to be downloading that so I can listen to it on the plane ride tomorrow. So yeah, Robert Glasper is that guy. He's a pianist, y'all. He does his thing. It's incredible, really. Um, he's worked with... Uh, uh, many names in the game. Erica Badu, that's that's enough right there, you know? <laughs> Kendrick Lamar, we'll, we'll hold that thought. Next up in Dinner Party, we have Terrence Martin. Terrence Martin is a producer. He's a sax player. Again, you, you've you heard his music. You've heard a lot of the things that he's worked on. Major person in the game, absolutely. Then we have Kamazi Washington, right? Kamazi Washington is also a saxophone player. And, you know, I got into his bag based on Kendrick and To Pimp a Butterfly. And if you don't know, you should know To Pimp a Butterfly is probably my favorite album of all time, but definitely top three. Absolutely, absolutely top three. Love To Pimp a Butterfly. And I was introduced to Kamazi Washington based on To Pimp a Butterfly. And then finally we have Ninth Wonder. And Ninth Wonder has worked with everybody from Destiny's Child to Anderson Pack. He's done a song with Drake back, back in the day, which comeback season, y'all. If you don't know, you should, because I'm an OG. But anyway, uh, you know, he's just worked with Mac Miller, like Rhapsody. He's worked with a lot of people in the game. Jay-Z. I mean, I could go on. But yeah, so this is who it's comprised of. Robert Glasper, Terrence Martin, Kamazi Washington, and Ninth Wonder, right? Ninth Wonder is producer. Kamaze Washington on sax, Robert Glasper as a pianist, and then we have Terrence Martin as producer and also sax. So all of them are combined. So here's the kicker, y'all. Kamaze Washington already knew this about, right? Because that's how it was put on to him. But Robert Glasper and Terrence Martin, I, I did not know that Terrence Martin produced all pretty much <laughs> to Pimp a Butterfly and Kamaze Washington as we know was in it and Robert Glasper was playing the piano on there and then we got Thundercat who was doing his thing and Thundercat sometimes weaves into Dinner Party so like they are to Pimp a Butterfly they are to Pimp a Butterfly and so it makes it even more of a reason as to why I need to see them my whole agenda was to see Dinner Party um, at dinner I wanted to be eating and listening to them so I hope Based on the schedule, it actually works out that way so I can eat and listen to dinner party and just have a good moment. But that's the Pimper Butterfly for me. So that's it, really. Dinner party is to Pimper Butterfly, adding Ninth Wonder 
it's gonna be an amazing time and yeah y'all really what i can recommend is their latest album but by latest it was out in 2020 but like i don't know i just want to see it i love jazz i love you know i love the more mellow and like you know just flowing jazz but to pimp a butterfly kind of like disrupted all that and it made me appreciate it a lot more because again to pimp a butterfly is top three but like i'm excited i'm excited to see what they do i'm excited to see just the set that they bring i'm ready to just vibe out in the desert eat some good food and just lay back and listen to dinner party y'all so i recommend seeing them it's a legendary performance a legendary group and i just feel like i would be silly to miss out these are one of those moments where it's just like these are legends baby yeah you need to go ahead and make sure you step up in a spot and you see all of that so absolutely dinner party must see at number five, y'all, we have Earth Gang. And Earth Gang holds a special place in my heart. And it's it's a little unfortunate that they are, to me, middle ground. But I feel like this low because for the longest, Earth Gang was going to be my number one. Um, but I, I have to admit, I did not like their most recent album that much. There were some songs on there that I did like and I thought were fun and cool. But I don't know. It didn't do me like Mirrorland. I came in on Mirrorland, and Mirrorland was just something else for me. I loved Mirrorland, y'all. And a little flashback, you know, a little, let me just show you to come up, really. When I got on the Earth Gang, y'all, I wanted to see them, and I texted one of my friends, and I was like, girl, we got to go see them. You know, Smino's coming to town, and Earth Gang is supposed to open up for them. And my homegirl was like, absolutely, let's do it. And I was like, okay. So some time went by. The week of the performance, she hits me up. She's like, we still going? And I was like, girl, I don't have enough money. I'm trying to save my ducats because I'm going to Coachella next week. <laughs> and then I was like, and it's sad because the tickets are only $37. <laughs> Y'all had to go back in the text messages and read it because I was like, oh, my gosh. I didn't have $37, but I had that thousand and some to go to Coachella the next week, though. So, you know what? I'm always make a way for Coachella, period. I can't wait to go for free. Coachella, I can't wait. Um, but yeah, y'all, I mean, I loved Earth Gang. I really did. I thought Mirrorland was such an amazing project. They're signed to Dreamville, so they're under J. Cole, so you know that. You 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 already know if J. Cole J. Cole gave a stamp of approval. I'm telling you, they are them boys. They have the lyrics to back it up. The lyricism is crazy. The delivery is crazy. The music is amazing. Like, again, just because I'm not a fan of the new album doesn't mean you can't be. You won't be. Like, you got to check it out. Tap into it. And there are some great songs on that album. Don't get it twisted. Like, it's still a good album. It just, I think Mirrorland just really held a spot in my heart. And I love it so much. They also have tons of EPs, y'all, so check those out as well. But great music, y'all. It's a vibe. It's fun. It's lit. It's turned up. I am excited to see a Billy, a Billy, a Billy, a Billy. Like, I would have seen that, y'all. And if they somehow were able to pull out a, a future feature, like him coming out on stage, like, that would be even greater, you know? But I'm excited to see Earth Gang, y'all. Tap in, check them out, see if you like them. And, I mean, ride the wave, y'all. Absolutely. Hitting us up number six, y'all. It's the one. It's the only. Flo Millie. <laughs> it's Flo Millie, y'all. And by the way that she excites me, y'all, you would think that I was a super fan. But if I'm being honest, I only know like two songs from her. And I'm being dead ass. One of which being Conceited, right? I, I feel like you you gotta know Conceited, okay? I really, really like Flo Millie. And I think it's more just her personality because I don't really know her music like that. Uh, but I just love her personality. I know like, what was it, last year or the year before last, she was deemed like one of the top 10 highest paid rap females of all time or either of all time or currently. Huge deal. Make that coin, baby. I would be conceited too. Okay. <laughs> 
I would feel myself too, girl. Absolutely. Like, Flo Millie just gives an energy that is just it, y'all. One thing about her, though, I love her performances, y'all. She gives a hot mic. She's rapping every single word. There's not a backtrack. Let's take, you gotta, gotta go back because you gotta respect it. Because I, I found it in this research, y'all, and you gotta respect it. She did a performance back in 2021 at Rolling Loud in LA, and the crowd was dead. The crowd was dead, okay? They were not feeling it at all. But she was up there and she was spitting every word like that bitch. And 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 she was spitting it like that bitch, but she was performing like that bitch. Yeah. The way she was spitting it, every word in it, focused, doing her thing. Like, she was just walking around there like, look, I don't care if y'all ain't feeling me right now. I'm in this thing period. I I respect the hell out of that. I respect the hell out of that. And you know, the thing that I really respect about it is she's not about the gimmicks, at least from what I've seen. Her her performances are not that theatrical. She doesn't have a bunch of like stuff in the background or all these dancers, at least from what I've seen, y'all. And so to me, y'all know how I feel about these vocals. It's only right. It only makes sense. Why would you not be giving pure vocals? Why would you not be rapping every word? Why would you not be going hard on the lyrics when there's nothing else going on? And and that's no shade to her. I don't mean that in a bad way. But, you know, like you should be able to produce everything. You should be able to give it your all. You're not dancing. You're not doing nothing. So let them words speak. Let that voice do something. And it does. I think her voice hits. I think it works so well. And I just feel the energy. It, it, yeah. Flo Millie, I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see you, ma'am. Do your thanks. And I am hoping, though, even though I haven't seen too much, like, over-the-top stuff when it comes to her sets and stuff. I'm hoping that she takes advantage of this Coachella stage and does do something a little different. I hope she does vamp it up a little bit and, like, give us something new and fresh and a little bigger. But I don't want that to sacrifice the vocals. So if that's going to sacrifice her spitting, I'm okay. I'll live. Like, I'd rather her just be on the stage giving me that, <laughs> give me that voice and do her thing. Like, I would rather that. So I'm excited just to see her perform, just to see that confidence, just to see her exude that fun energy. She gives you, like, I don't know, just her music. Not, I've been getting into her music because of this deep dive. And I'm kind of like, I like it because it gives me a boost. It, it makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel confident. It makes me feel like, you know, I am that. Okay, I got that. Like, she makes me feel that way. I'm excited to see the girl. I think it's going to be a fun time. She also knocks out my rap bag as far as female rap. I'm glad that I get to see a female rapper, specifically a black woman, y'all. Like, very happy about that. So I will be stopping in to see Flo Millie. Okay, I will be stopping in to see that because it's going to be up. It's going to be up. You can't tell me otherwise. So go ahead. Check out some Flo Millie. If you've been looking for a rap girl, if you've been looking for that girl to get into, we know Dochi's on Friday. Go ahead and get you some Flo Millie on Saturday, y'all, because it's going to be up. The energy's going to be hype. Be ready. At number seven, we got Mark Ribier, y'all. And don't talk about me because obviously when I did my reaction video and I saw his name, I was like, oh, my God, Mark Riblet. <laughs> Mark Ribley, Mark Ribier, y'all, uh, Mark Ribier. I'm excited to see him. He is actually a Dallas native, born and raised, baby, so we love that. But I think I got into him, oh, it was before quarantine. I'm sure it was before quarantine. I know it. But I think he just became more on my feed during quarantine because that's when he really hyped up everything because that's when he was performing inside his house. He has his robe on. He's doing his thing. And I think the coolest thing about him is it's all improv, y'all. It's all improv. No show is the same. No words are the same. No nothing is the same y'all when he gets on that set when he gets on that stage like it's all brand new he's coming up with stuff off the dome he said he'll either sometimes talk to somebody and then something will just come out or he'll see something and he'll just do it you know like it just is it just happens it just it just becomes and I'm excited to see that I'm so excited to see some art being created on stage like I'm excited to see it all come to life and see what he does he just it's a good time he's fun you know he's gonna wake up in the morning wake up up in the morning get up get up yeah I just I, I I don't know why 
but it's fun. It's it, it's fun. I love watching his videos. He worked with Erica Badu. He's just been doing his thing, y'all. I think Mark Ribier is going to be a great time. I'm not going to miss it. And actually, my Saturday outfit is a little inspired by him. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see Mark, but it's it's going to be a good time. If you want to just see some fun, somebody who's just living a best life and creating some music on the fly and just doing their thing. He does do crowd surfing too. Like if you just want a good time, Check out Mark Ribier, y'all, because, yeah, it's going to be up. I don't I don't really have any songs to recommend because I really just see him all on social media. And I'm excited to just see what he creates. So no songs to recommend. I just say, like, yeah, go there, check it out, and just have a good time. Mm. <laughs> At number eight, we got Shinseya, okay? Straight from Kingston. And if I'm being honest, she's another artist where I not really listen to her music like that. I don't listen to her music like that at all. I know Are You, Are You the Hit It on That That would, okay? And then I know Lick with Megan Thee Stallion. But that's about it. And if I'm being honest, I'm, I, I can't say that I'm necessarily a fan of that, right? But what I am a fan of and, and what convinced me and like really pushed her to be in this must sees was her Reggae Sum Fest performance 2022. Like that Reggae Sum Fest 2022 performance was up. It was, it was the energy and it was electric and the band and everything about it was just like, yeah. And she, she exudes confidence and she just seems like she belongs up there and the fits are crazy. She's always looking great. Like Shinsea, and, and I hope I'm even saying her name, is it Shinsea or Shinsea? But either way, baby girl, she, she's that girl. She owns it up there that's the shinseya i want to see at coachella i want to see her in that in that i want to see that i want to see the band up there i want to see her giving it to us like it's her hometown like this is her people this is where she belongs you know what i mean i i, I want her to give us that because i saw the rolling loud performances this past one 2023 and you know the other one in 2020 is it two or 21 I wasn't feeling it I did not like them I didn't like the performances she still had that energy but it just didn't sound that great I don't know it just rolling loud is I don't know I'm not a rolling loud person myself but like it just I don't know it, it just I didn't like those performances they seemed uh it, it just didn't seem like her I don't know I don't know but I'm telling you, the Reggae Sum Fest, that Shinseya, I want that. I want that. And I'm hoping that we get that. That'll be a make or break on if I stay or not. If we get that version of her, I'll be there the whole time. If we don't, I will leave. But she's a must-see because I really am hoping that I get that version of her. Love her. I, I love what she's giving. I love what she's giving. Not going to sit here and say I listen to her music like that. But I feel like... Just seeing the performance and what I watched of that Reggae Sum Fest, I, 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 it gave me enough to be like, oh, I don't know it, but I love it. I love how it feels. I love the vibe of it. So I'm telling you right now, if you just like reggae, if you if you want to get into that and you want to have you a good time, I'm telling you, go check her out. You, it, you won't be disappointed if she gives us Sum Fest. Reggae Sum Fest, Shinseya. That's, that's the version of her we want. If we get rolling loud... I can't say much about that. <laughs> and finally, at number nine, y'all. Yes, I know y'all go. I oh, I, I feel like I'm gonna get eight up because because it, it's not who people probably may want or expect, but. It's Calvin Harris. It's Calvin Harris, y'all. It's Calvin Harris. I, I got to see Calvin Harris. Absolutely. Calvin Harris, to me, is Coachella. He's he's one of those artists like Tyler, the creator, that they are Coachella. It just, it just is. And Calvin Harris, like, you know, for an old one like me, yeah, th those give me back to my, like, college days, high school days. Like, Calvin Harris is the guy. And I just... I just know it would be so much fun. It would just be an amazing time. If you don't know who Calvin Harris is, y'all, he's a DJ and he's giving you songs like I feel so close to you right now. That okay, you're gonna get if you slide on all your nights like this. Frank O 
lotion, okay? You're gonna have one kiss with Dua Lipa. One kiss is all it takes. You're gonna have summer when I met you in the summer. Like, I just feel like Calvin Harris just has hit after hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. And it would just be fun to wrap up the night, have a good time. I believe he's gonna be after the headliner, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Um, Calvin Harris, I don't really have much to say because I feel like we all know who Calvin Harris is. And if you don't, just look him up. And I'm more than sure you've heard his songs at like Forever 21 or, you know, at a Top Golf near you. <laughs> I feel like I can't really tell you much, but I'm just saying, like, it's Calvin Harris. Go check him out. Now, Finally, I do want to say I've, I'm I'm hearing some possible rumors about an LCD sound system appearance, kind of like Arcade Fire, you know, last year when they just had a set um, Weekend 1, but not Weekend 2, so we didn't get that. So I'm hoping that Weekend 2, we get this LCD sound system, because if we get LCD sound system, y'all, I can tell you right now, number one. They're my number one for Saturday. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm just hoping about that. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, putting that out there. Just putting the vibes that LCD Sound System will be there. And I'm going to have a great time. If they are, they'll become number one. Now, I do want to do an honorable mention, y'all. And this list will be real quick. But um, it, like I said, this list was really hard. It was really hard. There's a lot of artists. Again, I don't listen to a lot of these people on a regular. I really don't. So it was really about like gaining new love for these artists and being like who is worth my time who do I want to go see who do I want to go spend my day with you know um so the following are and in no particular order but hold on y'all hold on y'all before we get started on this honorable mentions list I and I know I look crazy okay I got the scarf I got the night guard I know I know I know but I'm in the midst of editing and I just realized that I did not put Eladio Carrion on my honorable mentions list, y'all. And I know why, because he was so tough to place. He was between my must-sees and my honorable mentions for a long time, to where I had to spend a whole day just listening to his music. Um, I love his stuff, y'all. He's from Kansas City. I love that part because all my family is from Kansas City. Uh, it's really just like rap in Spanish, like for real, for real. Like he gives the homie in the hood that really does this, but he just speaks Spanish, you know? Like I live for it. Now I will say, his parents are in the military. At least his father was in the military. So I don't know how true to it he is. But like, he's full of me. That's for sure. <laughs> and also, if you don't like Puerto Ricans saying nigga, he's not the artist for you. Because he says it, okay? I know I was listening to it. You know, don't know what he's saying really in Spanish. And then I heard nigga. And I was like, is that nigga? Is that nigga? And I had to look it up. And I was like, yeah, I know it when I hear it. So if you don't like that, he's definitely not the artist for you, y'all. He has a new album that just came out today. Uh, it features Future, Lil TJ, Mike Towers, Bad Bunny. So if you're into any of those artists, like, just know the vibe is right. So I just have to go ahead and slide this in. Enjoy the rest of the video, y'all. Blackpink want to see the girls saw them in 2019 they're gonna do amazing i'm excited for them i wasn't a fan of this new album i'll be honest with you so that's why they're not on my list um and yeah but the girls are gonna do incredible and i'm gonna see them i'm more than sure i'm gonna see them i'm gonna stop by the main stage and go see what the girls have to offer because it's gonna be amazing it's it's gonna be great to see them go from the sahara tent to the main stage and when i first saw them that first time i i low-key was like they've been they've been watching beyonce because they just they have a stage presence that is is unmatched yeah so blackpink do your thing i can't wait for y'all to do your thing and yeah go check them out then we have frank mercieri mercier i don't know how to say his name but he gives more of an african style dj you know it gives that kind of vibe and i love it might stop in and see again uh mm, you know then we have charlie xcx wanted to see the girl absolutely but yeah, I don't know what happened. It's just she she fell a little short for me, but I'm excited. Matha May. Matha May is a DJ, and there it's two of them. Really want to see what they have because they have some energetic music too that makes me want to go, go up. I'm excited to see. So we'll see what the times are looking like. Matha May is one. Then we have Umi. Umi, I want to say she's Japanese too. Japanese and black, I, I want to say, but I could be completely wrong. I, I don't know why. I'm assuming that, but I believe so. Something just tells me. 
okay? But I wanted to like her a lot, and she has a couple songs on there that, on her newest album that I like, and she has an old song that I, I had originally heard of hers that I had liked. But when I listened to the new album, it just didn't do it for me, so I didn't put her on there. But Umi, R&B, you know, but also with like a light indie-ish kind of sound. So check her out if you want some R&B, Umi. Then you have Hot Since 82, Again, another that I was really struggling with because I wanted to see him. I wanted to throw him in there. I know I have one slot left, but, you know, I just, I, I didn't want to force it. But Hot Since 82 is still very much a, I don't know, I, I might go see him. Donovan Jard. Donovan Jard is just like really a DJ set of like, like a club DJ. They're going to play a bunch of hits just back to back and you're just going to jam out. It's giving more of a Caribbean, you know, Jamaican kind of vibe. I think it's, it's, it's definitely up. And if I have some time, I'll stop by, but I just couldn't quite put him on the list. Underworld. Underworld is an old school DJ. I, I mean, he's given like, I think, he was in the 80s definitely the 90s but it's given like that kind of you know rave dance you know definitely for the gays absolutely for us absolutely for us um but again it just didn't lock me in enough to put him on the list and then finally i got suicide boys suicide boys i i i i, I I couldn't, I want to, I, I, I do like their stuff. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I do like their stuff. I think they have this album with like a guy named Germ, if I'm not mistaken, Germ. But I, I liked it. But yeah, it just, it was given to, when I saw what they looked like, not, and, and not necessarily like their aesthetic, you know, but I, I, I had, I had for a slight moment thought that they, they might be people of color. Um, and it was, I think it's the germ guy. Cause it gave me bone thugs. That's the, the album that I listened to. It was giving me bone thugs. And I was like, okay, okay. But then I was like, that's not bone thugs. That's not bone thugs. <laughs> that's not bone thugs. So I was just like, oh, I'm okay. I'm good. I don't know. But I, I actually, I, I can't lie. I do like their music. I do like it. So I don't know. I just couldn't quite put suicide boys on there but still definitely some artists you should check out no doubt about it all right y'all that's my top nine for saturday i hope this video was helpful for you i hope it taught you something new about these artists go ahead and check out the playlist i have created and see some of the videos hear some of the music watch some of the interviews and see if maybe you'll get into some of these artists like i said i'm really learning a lot about most of these artists on saturday i didn't know much about a lot of them uh except for two kind of three of them so this is all kind of new for me too y'all I really just picked them out of the lineup so I'm telling you Coachella is good for that y'all you learn so much you find so much out about these artists you don't realize that you kind of already do have a connection with some of these artists dinner party for example for me where you hear some sounds that you're like oh I like this never knew about this artist definitely a lot of artists on this list that I will be listening to like who have slid into my rotation i definitely recommend checking them out y'all but that's it for the video like i said check out the other videos for the must sees for friday am i i'm interested for friday and see what catches your vibe y'all all right until the next road trip later